So James Hayes Bohannon here again, talking about the uh, North America giant uh, floor map. And I want to talk, start with uh, where I'm from. Sometimes I present this to students of all ages as a riddle. I tell them I was born in the United States, but not in a state. When students think about that, sometimes they, they guess Puerto Rico, um, which is a, uh, the Commonwealth that is related. It's a, good, it's a good guess, but it's not part of the United States in entirely the same way that the place I'm thinking of is. Some students will guess Alaska or Hawaii. Um, those are now states, uh, and they were states at the time I was born. I'm not, I'm not quite that age. Uh, what I'm talking about is my birthplace, Washington, D.C. And I have lived most of my life, I've traveled a bit outside, and I did live in the Midwest for a few years and in the Southwest for a few other years, but much of my life has been in this area called Boswash, from Boston to Washington. And it's the area of um, our greatest conurbation or extended urban area in the United States. It's also, an, an I think an interesting region in what's sometimes called the, um, the, the shore or the coastline or the fall line. The major highway here, this, this map shows a lot of the major highways. And one of them that I was just on uh, last weekend actually is Interstate 95, which follows Old Route 1, which follows the fall line. This is the area that all of the rivers that flow toward the Atlantic along the coast here, come out of, of an upland area called a Piedmont, out into the coastal plain. And where they do, they provide two things that are of interest to urban geography. One is a, a place where uh, navigation becomes more difficult as you're moving upstream. So these become good places to bring food or other products for export markets. And it's also where we have a lot of moving water, so they, they powered a lot of the industry, early industry in the United States was along this fall line in cities like, you know, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, uh, Fall River, and others. I want to talk a little bit about what we can do with this floor map when we do have students. We can actually put the students on the map, and they find this really um, a great way to start engaging with the geography. Sometimes I have the students line up on this line, the 100th meridian, 100 west latitude, excuse me, 100 west longitude. If students line up along that, they can then start to make comparisons what's east and west of that line and what they find is a lot of indicators of the, the difference in population density, settlement density, road networks, the size and shapes of states, lots of things can be compared from east to west. The other thing that we can do on this map is to show the importance of, of river networks. So we can start students in the Mississippi River and have them walk upstream, showing the Mississippi goes all the way up here into Minnesota, and then follow tributaries all across the map. And what we're often able to do is it takes almost an entire fourth grade class to outline the watershed, the watershed or basin of the Mississippi ba uh, Basin. And we can talk about what can happen within that watershed in terms of trade and agriculture and settlement and the things that would be outside of that watershed and more oriented toward the coasts. And um, then we can also talk about the flow of water, pollutants, sediment uh, toward the uh, toward New Orleans in the connections internally within the country.